Yo, what is good, everybody? I'm your boy, Jujiro, and this is my Druid build. Let's go over those aspects first. First things first, let's talk about the Shepherd's aspect on our two-handed weapon here. It increases the damage we deal with our core abilities based on the amount of companions we have. And we're going all the companions for this build. Next, moving up to our necklace piece, we're going the shockwave aspect, and this increases the damage we deal with our pulverize. Now, moving down to our first ring here, we're going the aspect of the changeling's debt, and this increases the damage we deal to poison enemies while in werebear form. And now, as for our second ring, we got our first uber unique farming zir. We got the ring of starless skies, and this reduces the cost of our core ability and just gives us a fat damage increase. Now moving up to our headpiece, yes, we got it. We got Harley Quinn's. We got the best in slot helmet. We also got this from Farming Zero. And this just gives us straight up great stats and it also gives us 20% damage reduction in four ranks to all our skills. Now moving down to our chest piece here, we're going the ballistic aspect. And what this does is every time we fortify, it increases the ranks of our earth skills by two. And that's awesome because on our gloves, we're going the aspect of the earth sign horror. And this makes our pulverize an earth skill. Now moving down to the pants piece here, we're going the aspect of concussive strikes and this gives us the ability to daze our enemies and deal increased damage to dazed enemies. Now finally moving down to our boots, we're going the aspect of metamorphosis and this transforms our evade into an unstoppable proc. It's pretty sweet. Now guys, one thing I want to mention here real quick is they are getting rid of the shepherd's aspect, which really sucks. I really hope they bring something back in the same capacity that buffs our core damage. One thing I was hoping that they would have done was put the shepherd's aspect in the aspect of the stampede as one aspect. So we're getting buffed by companions and we're getting additional companions in one aspect. Another two aspects I'd like to see combined is the shockwave aspect and the aspect of the earth sign horror. Make it an earth skill and increase the damage to pulverize in one aspect. Simple. Now how I think they can rework the shepherd's aspect, they should give you 10% for every ability that you're going of the same suit. So let's say we're going all six werebear skills, just something interesting like that, you get a 60% multiplier. And what they could do to make it really fun is for every additional type of suit that you're going, you get a 10% multiplier. So let's say we're going two werebear skills and we're going the storm skill. So now we're getting a 20% increase for this one skill because it's not all werebear skills. And because we're going three companion skills here, we only get 10% increase. So what it would look like is we get the 10, the 20, and then we'd only get the 30 for having all the companions, right? But because we have the storm skill, we get that 20. So now let's say we did something cool like this, like we went claw, we went pulverize, went cyclone and earth. So we get a 20% increase for each of these abilities because they're off suit. And we only get a 10% increase for the companion skills because we're going two companion skills. So we'd have something like a maximum of 100% multiplier with any given build if we mix and match the right suits and the right abilities. Now, I'm not a developer or game designer, but I thought that'd be a pretty cool idea just to buff Druid in the right direction. Like we clearly need some damage buffs and I think this would be a cool idea. But I could be completely wrong, but I love playing this game and I like theorizing stuff. So that might be a cool theory. So that does it for all the aspects and my two cents on how they can buff the Druid and change the aspects around. But let's go over the tempering next. So on our two-handed weapon here, we went Earth Damage and we went Pulverize Size. This will just increase the damage of Pulverize overall, so we'll hit more enemies. And the Shockwave's a little bit longer as well. And it does increase Earth Damage. As for the Jewelry, the most important tempering you want to go is Resource Cost Reduction. It's going to really stack well with Ring of Star of the Skies. And if you can, try and put Critical Strike Damage as opposed to Damage or Earth Critical Strike Chance on your Jewelry. Now moving over to my armor guys, my armor got bricked long before I understood tempering as well as I do now. So if you could, all you want to do is put maximum life because you want to be a big thick bear for this build. And you could also put the chance to mobilize stun or freeze on your armor. As for the boots, just try and get some movement speed and some lucky hit chance as well. Alright guys, so that does it for all the tempering. Let's move over to the gems next. Like I said, you want to be a big thick bear, so just put those rubies in your armor. Increase your maximum life as high as possible. As for the weapon, we're going crit damage here, so we're going emeralds in our two-handed weapon. And as for your jewelry, I went all resist, but if you don't need all that resistance, just simply go to the gem that reflects the resistance that you need help with the most. Alright guys, that does it for the aspects, my tangent, tempering, and the gems. Let's go over spirit boons next. As for the spirit boons here, guys, I usually go wariness, but I decided to switch it up a bit and I went advantageous beast. Now you can go the reduced damage from elites if you want, but I like the movement speed and the impairment reduction. Now moving down, I went iron feather for increased maximum life, and then I went avian wrath for increased critical strike damage. Now in the wolf category, I went energized, guys. I didn't find pack leader was doing what I wanted to, and I'll explain more on the paragon board how I figured a way around this, but I went energized just to keep that spirit regeneration up. Now moving down to our final bracket here, we're going Obsidian Slam. We just want to simply overpower as much as possible, and this will definitely help us push faster through the pit. So that does it for all the Spirit Boons. Let's go over the primary and passive skills next. All right, starting things off with our basic ability, we're going Maul. Then moving down to our core ability here, we're going Pulverize, and we're going the version of Pulverize that increases our overpowered damage, and it gives Pulverize the chance to stun enemies. Now moving down to our defensive skills here, I am going Cyclone, but as you see, I have no skill points invested. And that's simply because we're going Shaco. 
So having the Harley Quinn's crest allows us to take abilities and put it on our ability bar without actually investing a skill. And I'll explain more on how you can access it without Shaco later. However, for our companion skills, I am putting one point into Ravens, and then I'm going to version of Ravens that gives us two additional Ravens. That's a lot of Ravens. The same thing goes here for Poison Creeper and Wolves. I have Shaco or Harley Quinns, so I don't actually have to invest skill points here. And moving down to the next tab here, we're going nothing in our Wrath skills. We're going nothing in our Ultimate skills. But as for our key passive, we're going Ursine Strength. And this will just give us a fat increase to our health, and it also increases the damage we deal to healthy enemies, and it also increases our overpower damage. Well, that does it for all the primary skills. Let's go over the passive skills next. As for our first passive skill here, we're going Quick Shift. So every time that we pulverize them in Werebear form, it increases our damage. Moving up the ladder, we're going Defiance, and this increases the damage we deal with Nature Magic skills. Then we're going Circle of Life, and this gives us some life on hit for survivability. And then we're going a full three in a natural disaster just to give us increased damage with our earth skills. Now guys, this is just for flat damage. You can remove these three points. And with those three points, you can invest one into Poison Creeper. Then you can invest one into Wolves. And then you can invest one into Cyclone Armor. And then we're putting a full three into Defensive Posture. And this will increase the amount of Fortify we gain. And it also gives us additional damage reduction. Now moving up the chain, we're putting one into Neurotoxin, but what we really want, of course, is End Venom, and this increases the critical strike damage we deal. Moving up and to the left, we're putting a full three into Mending, and this will increase the healing we receive, and it also increases our maximum life. Then we're going to put a full three into Provocation, and this will allow us to have more Overpower procs. Now moving to the right, we're putting a full three into Crushing Earth, and this increases the damage we deal while an enemy is immobilized, knocked back, or stunned, and that really comes into play with Cyclone Armor. And Cyclo Armor is also good just for straight up damage reduction. Then I put a full 3 into Stone Guard, and this will increase the damage we deal with our Earth skills when we're fortified over 50% of our maximum life. Then I'm putting a full 3 into Safeguard so that every time we critically strike with an Earth skill, we gain Fortify. Now moving up the chain, we're putting a full 3 into Clarity, and this will increase the damage we deal with our core abilities, and it will also increase the critical strike chance of our core abilities. Moving up to the Defensive tab, we're going nothing. We're going to go straight up to our core abilities again, and we're putting 1 into Predatory Instinct, but what we really want is Iron Fur for damage reduction while in Werebear form. Then we put 1 into Heart of the Wild, but what we really want is Wild Impulses, and this increases the damage we deal with our core abilities. However, it costs more Spirit. But with all the Spirit cost reduction and the Star of the Skies, we should be fine. And what a good alternative is to Starless Skies is the Mangled Aspect. So while you're in Werebear form, you passively regenerate spirit. And if you don't have Shaco or Harley Quinns, you can simply go the Aspect of the Fevered Mauling. So this will basically give you the damage reduction that Shaco gives you. However, it also gives you some increased attack speed. All right, so that does for all the primary and passive skills. Let's go on to that Paragon board next. All right, guys, as for the Paragon board, we got the classic six boards and five glyphs. And as for our first glyph, we're going Spirit. Now this might sound a little complicated, but it increases the damage we deal to critically struck enemies. And it also gives us increased critical strike damage. And as for our secondary board here, we're going the Earth and Devastation Legendary Node, and this increases the damage we deal with our Earth skills to crowd controlled enemies. And as for the glyph, we're going Earth and Sky, and this increases the damage we deal with our Nature Magic skills. And moving up to our third board here, we're going the Constricting Tendrils. Now guys, this is why I didn't go Pack Leader. I didn't want to have to rely on Poison Creeper to apply poison to our enemies. Constricting Tendrils will just simply apply poison to enemies hit by our Nature Magic skills, which works really well with the aspect of the Changeling's Death. Now as for the Glyph, we're going Outmatch, and this increases the damage we deal to non-elites and bosses. And what I really like about this is the passive skill, and especially on this board, we get that 15% increased maximum life. Huge. Now moving over to our fourth board here, we're going the Inner Beast board. I didn't go the Glyph or the Legendary Node. I mean, you can mix and match if you want to, but I don't suggest going this, especially with Star of the Skies or any kind of Spirit Regeneration. But what we really wanted here was the Rare Node to give us 8% maximum life. And we also got additional Critical Strike damage with Havoc. Now moving down to our fifth board here, we're going the Ancestral Guidance Legendary Node. And this increases the damage we deal after spending 75 Spirit. Now, this is a legendary node I think they can rework, like maybe make it 25 spirit or 50 spirit, or just increase the damage it deals. The multiplier could be bigger, and the spirit cost could be less. One of the two. And as for the glyph, we're going dominate. So whenever we overpower an enemy, all the damage they take from us is increased. And as for our sixth and final board, we're going survival instincts, and this increases the damage we deal while in werebear form. And as for the glyph, we're going fang and claw, and this increases the damage to close enemies while we're in werebear or werewolf form. And you guys know I got the build over at Mobilitix. So if you want to go check it out there, it's called the Season 4 Bear Poppy Druid build. And I got everything here from the assigned skills to the skill tree to the Paragon board. And I also have the budget version of this build if you don't have Star of the Skies or Harley Quinns. And what I'll do for you is I'll put a link in the description and in the comments. So you can simply just click on it and it'll take you right to the build. All right, so that does it for all the primary, the passives, the Paragon board, and the Mobilitix plug. Let's go over to that rotation demonstration next. 
All right, guys, here we are for the rotation demonstration. This is going to be the easiest rotation demonstration you've ever seen. Seriously, all you have to do is walk up, maybe pop your poison creeper. All you're going to want to do is just smash. Just smash to your heart's content. That's pretty much how the build's going to work, especially with Starless, guys. And then every so often, don't forget to pop your Cyclone because you will knock back enemies and then you'll get that buff to dealing increased damage with your Earth skills from to knock back or stun enemies. I mean, you're either going to get it from your Pulverize or your Cyclone here. And don't forget, you got clarity too, so don't be shy to pop all your companion skills and just do as much damage as possible. This is simply the rotation demonstration. All right, guys, that was a rotation demonstration, quite simple, but let's jump into the pit next and see what this build can really do. So guys, if you made it this far, of course, I always have a couple questions. What do you think they could do to buff the Druid? Now, one thing I wanted to mention here, guys, do you think they should allow you to carry a totem in your offhand? I feel like a lot of the reasons why a lot of the other builds can push higher in the pit is because they have the ability to imprint more aspects on their items. Let me know down in the comments if you think that'd be cool if we could rock a totem in our offhand weapon to imprint an additional aspect on. Or just simply let me know in the comments if the Druid needs a rework overall. All right, guys, here we are in a pit 101. Yes, I know. I finally done it. We've pushed up 20 tiers since getting Shaco and the Star of the Skies. I have pushed all the way up past 106, and I just kind of had to stop. I just want to make this build regardless of Shepard's aspect changing. And I know um, this is an achievement for me, being able to hit anything over 100. I got the achievement actually in Diablo 4, which is dope. So I'm just kind of happy to see this build working. But here we go, guys. We're just going to simply pulverize our way to victory. Keep it simple. Hopefully get those overpower procs more often here. But as you can see, it does pretty cool. All you want to just do is walk up, pulverize, smash and pass, pretty much. And if it looks like it's too crowded of a room, you know, just try and space out. Uh, try and space out a little bit. Again, you have the metamorphosis aspect on your on your boots, which is cool because it kind of gives you a dash, but you really want to save that for those... Um, those moments where you're CC'd, right? But we're also going the Spirit Boon that reduces the impairment reduction by 15%. So, um, sorry, increases your impairment, impairment reduction by 15%. So that definitely helps with the, um, the CC as well. But here we go. I'm trying not to talk as much as I did last time. I mean, really what I want it for this build is just, to, uh, you know, for someone to pick it up and use it, you know, and, uh, then be able to push 101 too. I think they said the best bang for your buck is, um, pit 101 because after this for the uh what's it called the nether iron or whatever it's called i'll check out what the name of that is later you only you get 60 right and then as you go up even like when it's like four times the difficulty you get maybe like three or four more so they say that pit 101 is the sweet spot now i don't want to go through that portal right away because i know there has to be more enemies in here uh, this might be slower than my regular pushes. I think I push this in about four minutes regularly. But of course, again, talking and playing at the same time, always trying to get better at doing that for you guys um, and try and give you the play-by-play. -play. But as you can see here, again, the, the rotation demonstration was simple. You know, you're popping your you're popping your poison creeper every so often. The enemies are getting poisoned by um, constricting tendrils. So there's really not too much maintenance besides either just, you know, I mean, there's really not too much upkeep besides just Walking around and smashing the ground with pulverize. That's it. It's like a smash and pass build. All right, sweet. We're on the second floor here, and we got an open area, not closed catacombs. I really feel like the build excels in more open maps, not like the corridors where the, the corridors are tight and such, because um, you really get the maximum effect of that pulverize in more open areas, which is really sweet. But, you know, like when those overpower procs are just happening back to back, it just feels really good. And that's, a re that's another reason why Obsidian Slam is so good with this build. Because every 10th kill now, as opposed to 20, we're getting an overpower proc, right? So even if it's like the little squishies getting murked by Pulverize, you're guaranteeing an overpower proc, right? So that's that always feels good. Just want to make sure I'm pathing correctly, especially in these open style maps. Because you can go off the beaten path and then have to like backtrack like 30 seconds to maybe find a, another pack, right? And it can get, it can be quite time consuming. I don't even want the shrine. I kind of want to have just a raw run here. Tier 101. As you can see, guys, I'm easily pushing through this. I'm not really having to worry about my health too much unless I get like stopped or staggered or something like that. But it, it, it's pretty simple. Like um, what I'll do is I'll do a community post where uh, I'll tell you how far I got with this build before they inevitably remove the shepherd's aspect. I think I'm going to push like maybe I want to try and push like 115. That's my goal. I, th I don't know what the highest is. I think I saw someone did a, peer, a pit 120. Uh, their build was a little different to this. I think they went the uh, retro, what was it retaliation, retaliation aspect. It's either the one that increases the damage you deal um, 
while for, uh, up to 30 uh, uh, 30 times multiplier while fortified or it's the one where uh, you deal 30 times more damage to um stunned stunned or knockback enemies that's the uh the version i think i saw they don't go the poison damage and i see a lot of people put pulverize on the two-handed weapon they don't put the shepherd's aspect on the two-handed weapon the shepherd's aspect i think is a better multiplier than the two-handed weapon but that's me but here we are at the boss let's see how fast we can do this not doing too bad with the talking too. Like usually I'm I'm done about a minute ago. But with the talking, I guess it slows you down a little bit. You're not really thinking or focused, but that that's excuses. We're here now, right? Let's see. So as you can see, you're doing you're doing pretty good chip damage. And I can see why some people go uh the increased damage when the enemy's stunned. Because when these when these bosses get staggered, right? You can do like big damage to them. But you know, we're just gonna take our time here and just pulverize away. We're gonna get some big procs on that overpower though. As you can see here, I think I saw 100 million there. So, like for this build, man, I don't have uh, my gear is subpar again. But we got Shaco and Starless guys finally, and that's why I like I wanted to make this guide for you. Uh, I just want to be a man of my word. I always say in my other videos that uh, once I get Shaco, I'll push 100. So here we are pushing 100. We got Shaco and Starless guys to boot. And if you guys are looking for Shaco and Starless guys, if you want a cool tip on how to get it fast, just do the um, the Tormented Zier, man. It drops like crazy. So. I was able to get it, and I got my I got I got um, Star of the Skies and Shaco, so that's sweet. There you have it, one on one. So that was the pit. It was fairly easy to do, and I'm sure this build can push beyond that. But let's go over that build summary next. As for the skills here, we got Maul, then we got Pulverize, then we got Cyclone, and we're going all our companion skills. As for the aspects, I'll chapter that for you in this video, and you guys can go check that out there. And the same goes for all the tempering as well. As for the gems, we're going rubies in the armor, we're going emeralds in our weapon, and as for our jewelry, we're going the resistance gems. As for the spirit boon, guys, you can go either wariness or you can go advantageous beast. Then we're going iron feather, then avian wrath, then we're going energize, and then we're going obsidian slam. Now, as for the paragon board, I'll also chapter it for you in this video, but if you guys want to jump over to Mobilytics, I'll include a link to that in the description and in the comments. Well, that does it for my druid build. I really hope they rework the shepherd's aspect or they just kind of rework the druid overall. But this build will still be good for over a month. And feel free to like and subscribe, guys. But if you simply enjoyed today's video or it brought you any kind of value, that's all I could ask for. Thank you so much. Well, that does it for me. I'm your boy, Jadiro. Sign out for now. Peace.